Hi there folks, Gareth here from Tracy UK and for Unboxings.com and I have the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 in a battered box. Oh, would you look at that, that's horrible. Right, it's uh, fresh out of the packaging here so uh, we have to cut around a few things. This is the European model. Uh, let's see what it shows on the back. Obviously this is the 32 gigabyte flavor which there is only 32 gigabytes available. It's got a superb camera if they don't say so themselves. Ultimate viewing with Quad HD, Super AMOLED, enhanced S Pen, fast charging which we are told will charge the phone uh, to 50% in 30 minutes. LTE CAT 6, 300 megabits per second. 2.7 gigahertz quad core processor and that's the 5.7 inch quad HD Super AMOLED display 16 megapixel uh, autofocus image stabilized camera with a 3.7 megapixel front camera so your selfies will look quite good Wi-Fi certified Bluetooth HD voice and a Ant Plus Antenna Plus or I don't know what Ant Plus is well, I'm sure it's something important. Oh. If this is broken, do not accept. All right, okay, so it's being broken. Right, uh, this is the black one, so we're gonna chop her open and have a look inside. Right. Uh, not quite as uh, recyclable packaging as we've seen in, on previous devices, um, but I'm sure maybe it is of some description. Okay, so here we are with the uh, the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. With, uh, lots of packaging around it. Looks like it's just been thrown in there, to be honest. And what else do we have inside the box? Well, we have the quick start guide neatly wrapped up with a QR code on the front there there's a bunch of other stuff in here as well, we've got warranty and uh, addendums we have the not turbo charger but the adaptive adaptive fast charging charger we have a micro USB cable grew a pair of superb Samsung headphones I do like Samsung headphones I think that as far as headphones go that are packaged in with it they are of a very high caliber and these look to be pretty much the same as the Samsung Galaxy S5 which is good oh, well are they that looks a wee bit different what's the inline jobby bit like yeah, yeah, I think they are just your standard uh, Samsung headphones. Okay, what else do we have? We have uh, a clip that allows us to remove the S Pen uh, uh, tips, I suppose would be the best word for it. You can pull it out with this thing and replace them. Very nice. Uh, what's this? Uh, yeah. Headphone earbuds for different sizes of ears and the battery. What size of battery is it again? It's 3,250 if memory serves. Come on, open up there. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Yes, 3,200 and... Oh, darn focus. There we go, 3,220 milliamp hours. Same as the Nexus 6. Very nice. Big. Okay, so this is the device. We'll remove all of this hardly attractive packaging that seems to have popped off during transit. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. Again, just reiterating what it says on the back cover. Two and oh, and remove that. 
Oh, ah, sticky. I believe that's it all. No, it's not. There's more around here. Just to keep those metal sides preserved. Oh, get off my fingers. Right, so you spend the first 20 minutes of taking your new phone out of the box and you have to get this stuff removed. Right, okay, so, yeah. Obviously the battery's not in it, so I can't really judge what the what the weight is until I work out how we open her up and put the battery in. So, on the front here we have ear speaker, a couple of sensors, front-facing camera, which was 3.2, 3.7 megapixel. What was it again? 3.7. Yeah, okay, so it was almost 4 megapixel camera on the front. That's what they had on the back of devices back in the day. Uh, button here, obviously there's capacitive buttons either side that we can't see. On this side we have volume rocker. And nothing else. Notice the, the metal here is a, a black effect on it, so it's nice to see a metal surround on a on a Samsung device, it's kind of it's kind of bizarre. Okay, on the bottom we have that's obviously where the antenna is. There should be one on the top as well, and maybe on the side. Nope. And then the USB connector here, and notice the bulge here. I've noticed that in, in quite a few pictures. Uh, so the the device is thinner at the edges, and the bulge in the center is considerably wider. However, whenever you look at it, it bulges out here. However cover is still here, so the, the whole line here is flat. The device isn't crooked, it's not wonky. Okay, so we have uh, microphones, microphone holes there. Was there any microphone holes along here? No, there wasn't. Uh, and the S Pen, which is quite stiffly attached there, not too bad, with a little pokey bit on the top. Looks very much like the S Pen off the Note 3. I'll just put that back in for safekeeping because I will lose it at some point. And uh, then along the side here, we've got a power button on the side, and on the top we have an IR blaster, another microphone, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack socket. On the back we have that big 16 megapixel camera. I'm really hoping that there's a bit of protective sealant on here. Otherwise, there's glue or something inside the camera. I don't know if you can see that. It looks a bit... There we go. So I'll have a look and see if I can remove this. And good news, it does come off. Not that I can get it off again. I haven't cut my fingernails in a while, so if you don't have fingernails, good luck to you. Uh, well, the biometric sensor that was uh, on the Samsung Galaxy S5 is resident here too, and a mono speaker on the back. It's uh, gone back up there from where it was on the Note 2. The Note 3 had speakers down here, which I quite liked, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I liked it. Okay, so how do we open her up? There's a pull bit here. And there we go. Okay, so there's the innards of the device. Uh, SD card here, SIM card there, external speaker down there, and battery goes in here. Some ports there probably for wireless charging, or maybe those are the wireless charging ones. So we'll whack this in and see if we have any charge, at least to boot the device up. Um, as I'm going to use this as my main device, I'm going to get a SIM card in. That's not uh, spring-loaded. Okay, so I have a nano sim in that. Um, that's why it looks a bit bizarre. There's a, a shoe around it. Right. Clicky, 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 clicky. And with the battery inside, the weight is very comfortable. It's not a heavy device. And it's wonderful because we can put it together with the rest of the family. Although I don't have the Note 1. So that's the Note 2. The Note 3, which is quite a bit, well, a wee bit larger than the Note 2. But it's, uh, it's very in keeping with the Note 3, if anything. 
width-wise, we can see there that there is a bit of a difference. It is a little bit narrower. Well, it's kind of deceptive, I suppose, because of this bit here. But I'll let you guys be the judge of it. It does seem to be about, maybe about evens. The Note 4 is a wee bit taller there. Same width. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's turn her on. We have liftoff. Okay, so we've got uh, set up. There's a couple of buzzes there as well. We're going to go for UK because that's where we happen to be. We'll jump on to. Right. I understand whatever it is you're talking about. And we'll sign in as well. Okay, we're signed in and good to go. Keyboard is very comfortable to use, much like the previous devices. Okay, back up and restore. Restoring all the bells and whistles. Obviously, Samsung provide a, I was having a look for it on the Play Store earlier, the Samsung Store, a smart switching utility in their Samsung App Store that allows you to move your content from one phone to another phone. And I'm quite interested to see just how much of it it actually carries across, whether it be text messages and all that kind of stuff. That would be good. So if I'm going to... Okay, so we got that set up. Um, I ran through the... Uh, the Samsung setup and it actually detected that I had this device and a, and a couple of other devices and it's downloaded the information from this device which was my main device I know that's a bit crazy there's a Note 3 sitting here but I was using a Note 2 I have my reasons for that if you listen to the podcast you will hear what they are uh, so it has downloaded everything that I had on this, which was backed up to my Samsung account, so it is bringing in all my text messages, all my, bringing in all my previous call records, messages, and that sort of thing. It'll bring over all my photographs, which makes it more difficult for me to show you around the device without showing you all of my personal information. Okay, so uh, Play Store, we've signed in, we've got access to all the applications. It's currently downloading a bunch of things. It's downloading an update actually to the device already. That might be the update that allows you to communicate with your car. Mirror link or something I think, believe it is. And it's downloading my most used applications. Right, okay. And we have to update a few things along the way. Of course. Well, it's setting up a device. Oh, and we've downloaded the Google Launcher. We'll keep it on uh, touch whiz just for the moment. Over here we have Flipboard. I started getting into it actually on the Samsung Galaxy S5 and I have carried on using it uh, on the notes. So I'm I do quite like Flipboard. I think it's a it's a good addition to ooh. Uh, to the the phone itself. Okay, so the software update that's come through is device stability improvement and bug fixes, new and or enhanced features. Not going to tell us what they are. Uh, right. Okay. Further improvements to performance. Blah 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 blah. Right. Okay. Well, we're going to install this just because we can. And we have to restart. Took a while there, but we had to do that update. Uh, took a while, and we I mean, now have a picture of my cheeky little son. Okay, so let's have a look at the S Pen because that's what it's all about. It runs Android. Everybody knows what Android's like. It's uh, got touch whiz on top of it. Everybody knows what that's like. So it's the pen that makes the difference, and the size of the screen, and the quality of the screen, and the speed, and things like that. Okay, so hover your S Pen over any part of the screen and press the Pen button to access the four useful pen features. Okay, there it is there. So there's Action Memo, Smart Select, Image Clip, 
and screen write. Okay, so we're going to have a go with this smart select. Select an area of the screen with the S Pen to collect a variety of content, including text. So if I draw that around there, to view the text icon, oh, the view text icon will be shown if the select content includes text. Tap to collect them for later use. OK. So that's detected that there is text in this, meta text. What happens if we hit that? And it pulls the text out of the screenshot. If I hit back, we go back to that, and we hit that, and it goes into this little doohickey here, and we can draw. No, we have to hit the button again. Okay, <laughs> that didn't work the first time, so we'll grab these icons here. And then we hit that again, and it throws up there, so we now have two clippings that we've taken. Very fancy. So you can use that on web pages to highlight areas and then put them all together into a note. So if we hit that, we can add it to my scrapbook, create a category. Um, crap. Pick our layout. We'll go with that because it looks a little bit more exciting. Hit save. And crap is already in use. Hit save. And there we go. So we now have an item in our scrapbook. Okay, so this is always a fascinating one for me is the actual notification screen. We have S Finder. What does that do? It's a search facility. Stuff in the last 30 days or whatever tags, locations, and handwriting. Okay, so that's probably a wee bit like just a Google search. So we're going to go in here. I was having a look down uh, messages. Uh, the settings here uh, earlier, as we have a huge amount of things to be able to play with. Obviously, we have the typical inbuilt Android features, but uh, Samsung have taken the liberty to expand upon them a good deal. Take for example, obviously we have the mobile hotspot that's same as normal. Under Wi-Fi we have one of these smart switch or smart network switches that you can leave your Wi-Fi on and it'll automatically latch on to whatever you happen to be using uh, as a standard Wi-Fi data connection. Uh, all that seems to be fairly, uh, fairly standard, but whenever you come to the device, you have a, a bunch of different exciting options, like for example the lock, lock swing. It always perplexed me that you can't really put too much on the lock screen on a Galaxy device, as you know, some of them you have be able to select icons and things like that to be able to open directly to the camera or Evernote or something, depending on what you happen to be using the most. This I haven't managed to find anything for the lock screen which uh, only has a camera button here. It would be nice to be able to throw in a few extra dongles and widgets along here. Um, see these sorts of things you can pretty much play around with. You've got your unlocking effects which uh, Samsung have always been quite nice at where you can put in different screen features camera shortcut which is important for quick access, uh, quick access. I haven't actually checked to see if uh, that shortcut from previous galaxies is there where you hold your button down the screen and turn the phone. No, that doesn't seem to do too much. They're happy enough just with the camera button there. Action memo on lock screen. To create action memos, double tap the screen with your S Pen while pressing the pen button. That would be a really nice thing to be able to expand on, having uh, features and gestures and swipes to allow you to do stuff directly from the lock screen. Lock screens are getting much smarter on other devices. The Note 4 hopefully will possess the ability and we'll, we'll try and cover that in uh, any upcoming reviews. So uh, open the multi-window view. Is It's changed from previous ones I believe. I haven't I've, I've noticed it popping up the odd time when I've hit 
the screen uh, along the way because obviously there's been a bit of a time since I unboxed this initially and now I'm completing the unboxing. Uh, there's been a whole 24 hour window there that I've been able to use this and have a play with it. Uh, notification panel loads of stuff to be able to uh, tinker around with there with the, the flick of a button. Obviously you've got 10 things at the top here and you can switch those with these available buttons here for your most used jobbies like uh, I would use blocking mode an awful lot for whenever I'm going to bed. Hit that and it'll shut up the phone until 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I turn that on almost every night. Uh, I haven't quite worked out what download booster is. I'm hoping that's something to do with LTE. But uh, I'll have a play with that in the upcoming weeks. Motions and gestures. Direct call, smart alert, mute, pause, palm swiped capture. They've kept that in there. Direct call. Oh yes, whenever you're on a contact in your call log, you can just put it up to your ear. Smart alert. Your device will vibrate when you pick it up to notify you about missed calls. Oh yes, that's kind of handy. Mute, pause place palm on the screen, turn the device over. So you basically cover the cameras and the sensors and it'll shut up. Okay, uh, other things down here, we've got a Counts Cloud, allows you to synchronize all your cloud storages. Yep. Uh, videos, when did that come up? Oh right, uh, for uh, syncing videos, I must have hit the screen there by accident. Uh, back up and reset easy mode that makes the device an awful lot easier that's been a staple of the note and uh, will actually touch whiz for a few years now uh, blocking mode private mode this is a new feature that's new to me if, if anything um, I don't remember it being on the the S5 so you can hide personal content to keep it secure on your device Android L is going to feature something similar to this as well. Content moved into the private mode will uh, be hidden and will not be shown when you close private mode. Be aware that the content will appear in a separate folder in your device when it is automatically synchronized by a third party application such as Dropbox. Check the auto synchronization options or settings before or uh, for your other applications before using private mode. Okay, so we can select gallery, video, music, and keep our sensitive material uh, slightly secret. Moving content to private mode. And you get a little lock on it once you've done that. Handy if you... Well, there's one use of that that springs to mind. Uh, the finger scanner isn't turned on by default. It doesn't seem to be, anyway. I don't know whether or not Samsung's uh, revealing that it's a bit of a mistake perhaps or it's not as robust as we would like to have thought. I thought it was very good on the S5. I never had any issues with it. Uh, I used it on PayPal all the time and it worked first time all the time. Maybe my fingerprints are more pronounced than some other people's. Uh, language and input, date and time, safety assistance. Ooh. To enable safety assistance, add at least one primary contact. Okay, so emergency mode geo news. To use this function, download the following application. Right, okay. Send help messages. Okay, accessories, power saving, storage, and about device. Then your application manager, default applications, and stuff. Uh, standard, all been there before, just given a bit of a an update with a paintbrush. So yeah, um, all in it. TouchWiz is pretty much just going through the the typical. Uh, refresh that it would do from device to device and these features will be rolling out to the likes of the Note 3 and the S5 as they come along but it's the hardware that's really getting me at the moment having a full day's use on it now is a bit of a cheat in an unboxing I really like the hardware it's it's such a nice weight it's just right it doesn't feel like a big hefty device and to be honest the iPhone 6 Plus does feel considerably bigger than this um, when you have the, them both hand in hand. The Note 3 itself feels bigger than this too and it's heavier as is the Note 2. Uh, the, the metal around the outside really adds value to it in your hand. I, I just love talking or love feeling it 
and then I don't know if you can see if I can get this up to the light but the glass just feels nicely honed there's a little bit of a taper down in there into the the edge of the frame which previous note devices haven't had they've been sort of a, a, a square edge whereas this is just it's finely honed down and uh, the way it carries the light when you're looking at it it just looks like a much more refined device it's it's beautiful it's a really is a thing of beauty the note 4 so as you can tell the 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 review will probably be highly positive um when it comes eventually hopefully but at the moment this is going to be my my go-to phone um and i'm hoping that i take to it uh much more than i did to the note 3 because of the Note 3 I actually moved back to the Note 2 after a while. The battery seems to last forever. I, I can't fault the battery right now. I, I was using it for most of, well I have been using it for most of the day. I had to put it on charge there um, because I had an opportunity, a window to do that and it was done at 70% so I figured ah, I'll put a charge in it because it's still in my mind to charge a device whenever you have the opportunity. This I think can comfortably get me through a day and I am a heavy user might even go to a day and a half which is you know uh, that's incredibly handy because most people usually charge it at night anyway the 50% top up uh, that you get from 0 to 50% straight away is brilliant but I haven't had ne uh, need to use it and that's the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 take care now